drinking tea while reviewing coffee gear. Yep. Hi everybody! We are here to talk about this lovely tamper because I fell down the rabbit hole yet again! Surprise! I think anybody that goes into a coffee journey will soon realize that so much of their money and disposable income goes to this very expensive hobby! I reviewed in one of my other videos about budget espresso accessories this little dude. It's the Matau 58mm leveler tamper. I did mention in that video that it leaves a little bit of a ring when I'm preparing my puck. And it was kind of annoying. I found workarounds, but you never really want to find workarounds with espresso. If you've ventured into the world of espresso, it's, it's very finicky. It's very, it's a very humbling hobby because one minute, you'll have it and the next you will not. When it comes to espresso, either you invest in perfecting your skills with a more regular tamper that doesn't have all these like fancy gadgets and gizmos and leveling and stuff like that and you go a more manual approach and you really feel it out, obviously that would be the best. But I don't wanna go that route. I prefer getting the gadgets and gizmos that will help me with my espresso game. If I can minimize as many variables as I can in the espresso, process, then I will go that route. And so I've seen the force tamper, which is the top, top tamper. I've not seen anybody that has purchased it that has regret that decision. It is a pricey tamper. However, it's something like 250 Canadian dollars, I believe. I've not gone that route yet, but I did purchase this tamper and an extra head, which came to 115 Canadian. It doesn't come together. I will link this product down below. I got this off AliExpress. Uh, they have a lot of good coffee gear. By the way, Force Tamper, one's espresso. I time more is from China. China is killing it in the manufacturing of these great espresso gear. Tamper's actually 55 US on its own. And then the extra head that I bought, which is a ripple base that I will show you later, is the 25 US. And that was about $8 US shipping. So if you are Canadian though, there's no foreign transaction fee for these AliExpress purchases because they already do it for you. So the price that you see in Canadian dollars is the price that you will pay. And that's what you'll be charging a credit card. For some reason, when you do get the order number, it shows you in US. So, say that. It comes in a very simple box. It's really well packaged. The tamper came in this nice little velvety bag, but I'm not going to store it in the velvety bag. And then it comes with an extra spring. And then the extra head that I got also came in this nice little velvety bag for storage. So what sets this tamper apart from other tampers and how is it like or unlike the force tamper? Well, it's a self leveling tamper that has a spring in it. You could push down. Unlike the force tamper, there is no calibrated 30 pounds. You have to adjust the depth yourself. You'll notice that there are three little openings right there. Those are kind of like ventilation systems and those allow the air to escape when you push down. So there's no negative pressure and it's very easy to push in and out and allows the spring to work its magic to reposition it back. All you have to do is put your tamper on a port filter It sits on top already leveled like that. So you don't need to worry about angles. You don't need to worry about leveling it. And then you just push down once you've had the adjusted height, which we'll go into later. And then you release because of that spring. It removes variables. It removes room for error. It makes this step consistent and so easy and simple once you've figured out the height that you need to adjust to. Let's go through all the specs. The reason that I got this is because it comes in two different sizes, the 58.35 millimeter and the 58.5. I have a Breville dual boiler. The Porta filter is actually a little bit larger than a 58.5. So there is still a little bit of wiggle room. I was worried that this would be too tight. In my case, it wasn't. If you wanna be 100% sure, take a caliper or something to measure your Porta filter because there's probably little range and tolerances. I read other people had purchased 58.5 tampers and they were fine. In my case, it was fine. A lot of these fancier espresso machines as well use the 58.5. I think the only one that I've seen that uses 58.35 is a VST basket, but make sure to check all that. Check all your specs before purchasing. Do quick Google search, see what other people have mentioned just so you don't end up spending so much on this just to be disappointed. That's never fun. So this beautiful tamper comes with different wood finishes. I got the beautiful walnut finish. I've seen other tampers that are similar, but has a rounder 
type of handle and it's meant for smaller hands, but I have pretty tiny hands and this was absolutely fine for me. It's not something that I'm holding all day either. It's very heavy as well. This tamper on its own weighs 455.9 grams, which is 1.005 pounds. So about a pound. It feels really nice in the hand. Don't drop it. <laughs> I actually dropped it. It dented my floor. Um, so don't do that. Don't, don't make that mistake. The whole time I told myself to not drop it and of course I dropped it. So learn from my mistake. It didn't ruin this. It comes with a flat base, which is perfectly fine. I bought the ripple base separately. They don't have a version from what I saw that comes with the ripple base. The, like I said, the ripple base was 25 US and it's beautiful. Is it necessary? Not really. So I tried to look up information about the ripple base could not really find any concrete answers about what this could do in terms of extraction. I, I mean, it, lo it looks beautiful. It's like a little Zen garden when you're done your puck. The theory is that it helps with channeling. I think I might've noticed a tiny difference that it was a little bit better with the ripple than the flat base in my case, but there's just so many factors and so many places that you can mess up in your puck preparation that it's really hard to say if there is an effect and if it's just placebo or not. Uh, I don't regret getting this. I tried this for a few days. I think I'm gonna go back to this. So when I looked online, some of the theories for the ripple base, take it with a grain of salt because it doesn't seem like there's much concrete information on this. Oh my God, James Hoffman, please make a video about this. That would be super helpful. I'm gonna read off of what I found because I can't fully remember all of this by heart. Uh, this is from various different websites that I found the information. Creates more of a textured finish. It's supposed to help the water more evenly distribute for consistency with the coffee to water contact. It was used in the World Barista Champion of 2009. The theory is that the ripple effect provides more surface area for the water to pass through the coffee. So it encourages controlled channeling. I'm assuming that the theory is that there's a bunch of concentric circles where the water is trickling down. And as these circles are quite close together, then your entire puck would be properly saturated. Yeah, that's what they're saying. So it, it helps the initial saturation of the puck as the water pressure builds. Some have even described the end result in their espresso is a sweeter, more pronounced flavor. I don't think I can distinguish that, that significant of a difference. The different bases is not where I'm gonna notice a huge improvement in flavor or, or consistency. It's really my, technique at every single step and dialing in the recipe. That's what will affect it the most. I'm speaking between the two, the two bases, not the tamper itself. Another article I found or a comment on a, on a forum was that the ripple shape is pretty. <laughs> it is, it's very pretty, but has no demonstrable benefit and is marginally harder to clean. Marginally. I don't really see that being a negative, but that is, that is that. So now we covered the specs, let's go over how to adjust this and all the different parts. What's really lovely with this one versus the Matau, cheaper end tamper. I have seen some tampers puck style that have markings. I think the OCD, which is quite a bit more expensive than this one, but this one does have little markings on it. Although most of the time I can't see the numbers that are accompanied there, but there are a couple of lines. How much this, helps me is minimal. If you dose less than 20 grams, in my case, Breville dual boiler, I dose 20 grams. If you dose less, if you're doing an 18.5, the markings would be a bit more useful because you would see them a little bit more. In my case, I can just barely see the one at the tip. And so it's not that useful for me, but it helps me when I'm swapping out the bases. If I, if I decide to do a switch midway through, it does help a little bit, but I usually will just end up restarting my adjusting process. When I switch coffees or when I'm halfway through the bag, because the coffee gets a bit older and I have to adjust a couple of things, I take the Breville tamper and I'll go manually and feel where I get resistance with the puck because you can't feel that with this as it's quite heavy, which is like great because you don't need to put a lot of force, but not great when you're trying to figure out the depth that you need and you can just keep pushing it and, and over compress the puck almost. Now once I figure out the depth there, I'll go in with my tamper 
and just play with it and adjust to figure out how to match that depth. So in my case, I need to add a bit of height here. When you press it down, you might notice that if there's a gap, that means that you actually have to loosen things up and you have to decrease that depth there. To adjust the depth, it's very simple. There are several parts to this tamper. There is the base here, that's the head. That's what this piece is. Then there is this part right here, which actually sits on top of your porta filter. And then you have the spring in the, oh, I almost dropped it. <laughs> that would have made such a big boo-boo on my counter. You see that presses right here and it blocks here. And then to adjust the depth, you unscrew the handle. You can also keep track a little bit of the markings, but I kind of just go by eye here. I see that I probably need about this much depth, especially because I'm using the ripple base and I can visually see that it's making slight light markings here. And that's actually helpful to know how much more I need to go in. And then these two parts I would tighten together. So now that blocks this. And then I can go again. Yep, starting to create more markings. And I keep adjusting until I feel what is right. And then to change the head, it's very simple. You unscrew the entire device. a long thread, you screw in this new head. And then you do all the adjustments that you need and voila, you have changed the, the base from a flat base to a ripple base. So the question that we're all wondering is, does it make better coffee? Every other process that you're gonna be doing in your puck preparation is more important. This simplifies it because it self levels, because it sits on the porta filter. So that's one less thing to worry about. You adjust the depth, so that's also one less thing to think about. That last tamping step is simple because you just stick it on your porta filter, push down, like a stamp. Yeah, it's like a stamp, you're stamping your coffee. So if you have a good puck, tamper that you really like or any tamper that you like that is a good fit because this does leave a ring, then do you really need to go for this? If it ain't broke, don't fix it unless you really want to just keep buying more get gadgets and gizmos. I quite like this. For now, I'm not going to be getting the force tamper, but you never know. If I look at my trajectory, it is a possibility. It is a expensive possibility. That's it for this review. Like if this video helped you, will help uh, the algorithm help other people find the video. It also helps me know that you liked it. And comment, let me know if you are planning on getting this. How deep are you in this rabbit hole? <laughs> it's too late for me, so. Share this video with other coffee friends of yours. Subscribe if you aren't, hit the bell notification. I think I went through all of that, okay. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.